Leshnayan syndrome is the topic, and before I get into the symptoms and all those things, I'd like to talk a little bit about DNA. And we all know what DNA is, but the building blocks of DNA are really at the heart of this, uh, the heart of this uh, disease. The building blocks of DNA are nucleotides, and, nu and components of nucleotides are purines and pyrimidines, and we all know that. And there's uh, basically two purines, uh, adenine and guanine, and there's two uh, pyrimidines, which are thymine and cytosine. Now, in Leshnayan syndrome, we're going to focus on this one here, guanine. So, why is this important? Well, normally, these nucleotides are synthesized in the body de novo, meaning from scratch. But in a few instances, what you have is the body can create DNA by recycling um, the breakdown products of old DNA. So that's what I really, really wanted to show you. There's a small part of DNA that's created in our body because it's recycled from degraded DNA of broken cells. So I wanted to illustrate how that's done. So let's say you have some DNA that comes from some broken, old, dead cells. What happens is, there's a very extensive pathway, but I'm going to show you the simple version. It goes from DNA to GMP. GMP is guanosine monophosphate, and this is a nucleotide. Now then the body further breaks it down into guanosine and then further breaks it down into guanine. Now, instead of just throwing this away, the body has a mechanism of recycling it back into GMP. And then later, that is converted back to DNA that is usable. It's just, it's just a recycle process, and this is uh, also known as a salvage pathway. That's another name given to this pathway. Salvage pathway, recycling DNA from breakdown products, whatever you want to call it. Right here, this step right here, is at the heart of Leshnayan syndrome. It involves an enzyme called HGPRT. Big long, it's an abbreviation for a big long name. This is the enzyme that's used to recycle. In Leshnayan syndrome, this is defective. And the degree of deficiency of that enzyme is what causes the uh, symptomatology. Now, this isn't over yet. Uh, there's just a couple more things I wanted to add. Now, if you don't have this, think about it. If you don't have uh, uh, HGPRT, if it's deficient, if you, don't, if you have a deficiency, then what happens? Guanine is not able to be recycled back into GMP, so guanine levels become excessive. And guanine is broken down into xanthine. And one final step, I promise, xanthine is broken down into uric acid with the help of an enzyme called xanthine oxidase. And this uric acid is what causes a lot of the problems in Leshnayan syndrome. It causes gout, it can cause kidney stones, and it can also accumulate in the brain. And later I'll show you a drug that actually helps uh, block this enzyme that is part of the treatment. So very important, please understand that, the pathophysiology of Leshnayan syndrome. So now let's talk about the Leshnayan syndrome, you know, the symptoms and the, how to diagnose it, how you treat it and all that stuff. So symptoms. Well, the symptoms are actually very, very interesting and unlike other diseases that you have very, very common things that are sometimes hard to um, differentiate, Leshnayan syndrome presents with something that kind of screams out at you on clinical vignettes, self-mutilating behavior. And in particular, what I'm talking about is biting and chewing of the fingertips or lips. 
And uh, this is an unfortunate uh, b behavior that can happen because of the CNS involvement and the intellectual disability. Um, another thing, and we just briefly talked about this, that with the uric acid, and that can lead to gout, and, I, and it can also lead to stones in the um, kidney and the urinary tract system. Now, the intellectual d disability is actually quite severe, um, so I think it's important to uh, illustrate that probably uh, at the very top. It's rather tragic, actually. Now, how, how would you diagnose this? It's actually a very difficult diagnosis because it's such a rare condition. Um, it's an X-linked uh, recessive disorder, so that's the genetics involved. But there are fortunately ways to test for this. Um, the first the test is, of course, a very simple one, which is just a uric acid level. And that's very common, easy to do. But fortunately, there's also an assay that you can do to check that enzyme that I talked about that's um, deficient. HGPRT enzyme assay. And that will give you the uh, percentage of this enzyme that's um, still working or or deficient. It'll be able to give you an idea of what's going on with this enzyme in the body. Treatment. Unfortunately, uh, there's no cure for this. So the treatment is really just supportive. Um, supportive meaning you have to actually physically restrain the child so that uh, he or she doesn't actually, um, you know, bite themselves or mutilate themselves. Um, you also have to, in 60% of the cases, believe it or not, uh, take out the child's teeth uh, so that he doesn't, he or she doesn't bite uh, his fingers or lips. Uh, the one drug that's used to help with uric acid levels is allopurinol. And if you remember that pathway that I had written, xanthine um, to uric acid, uh, there's an enzyme called xanthine oxidase that helps produce the uric acid, xanthine oxidase. Well, this allopurinol blocks that. Allopurinol is essentially a xanthine oxidase inhibitor. So that's how the drug works. So let's look at some uh, clinical vignettes, see what this looks like. A mentally retarded 10-year-old boy presents with arthritis, nephrolithiasis, and progressive renal failure. Since his first years of life, he manifested peculiar neurologic abnormalities consisting of self-mutilating biting of his lips and fingers, chorioathetosis, and spasticity. Two male relatives on his mother's side presented with a similar condition and died in their teens. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? Well, um, like I said, you know, this uh, kind of uh, presentation really is very specific uh, for Lushnion syndrome. And um, they also give you a little bit of genetics there, too. So, without a doubt, this is choice E. And then the last one, a baby was apparently normal at birth, begins to show a delay in motor development by three months of age. At one year of age, the child begins to develop spasticity and writhing movements at age three, compulsive biting of fingers and lips and head banging appear. At puberty, the child develops arthritis and death from renal failure occurs at age 25. The patient's condition is due to an enzyme deficiency in which of the following biochemical pathways. Well, all they're asking you basically is, what type of uh, molecule is ex involved. And the molecule that is involved mostly is guanine. And guanine is a purine. So that would be C, purine metabolism. 